Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor for episode 79. Thanks for taking the time to join me on this episode as I'm back after fully charged live USA last weekend. Boy, what a weekend that was. I want to thank everybody who came up to say hi to me, ask about the show, tell me their feedback on the show, and of course, more importantly, tell me their EV stories because I learned a lot. Thank you very much. It was a great show. I was busy for both days. The panel was great. Everything was just fantastic. I uh, want to thank the fully charged people for having me down and for giving me some space to talk to people. So thanks a lot. I'll have an upcoming episode, which I'll talk about a couple of the highlights from the show, and I'll share that with you on a future episode. But right now, let me get into some current news from the past week. Well, first news that came out for um, EV numbers for 2019. Now, this is something that I always track every year. Uh, as you folks know, I look at the EV market from a global perspective, uh, so not just the U.S. or any other regions, but all around the world, and try to look at numbers. So some numbers have been released, not all the definitive numbers, but most of them. And 2019 was a good year, and as I mentioned at the, uh, the end of last year when I was talking about what to expect as far as numbers go, um, it's right in line with what I thought. We had some growth, but it wasn't tremendous growth. It wasn't this doubling effect that some analysts are predicting that's going to happen, and that we're all going to be driving EVs by 2025. Sorry, folks, it's not going to happen, but we are growing, and that's the good thing. So in 2019, um, the uh, around 2.2 million passenger cars, or plug-in cars, were sold um, globally, and that translates into about 2.5% market share. So about one in every 40 new cars and light vehicles, it's lumped into the same category, is a plug-in. 74% um, are all electric cars. So we're continuing to see the rise in all electric versus plug-in hybrid. It used to be like this and now we're seeing that shift. So that translated into global growth. Uh, the numbers are roughly around uh, about 210,000 more, or about 10% from the year before. And that's again a global worldwide number. Remember the amount of cars and light trucks that are manufactured around the world. Uh, in, I haven't seen 2019 numbers yet, but 2018 was around 85 to 90 million. And about, now we're seeing about 2 million, 2.5 two million are EVs. So we got a long way to go in market penetration and growth, So that which is positive. If anybody can guess the number one actual brand and model, I'm sure most of you are saying Tesla and the Model 3. And if you are, you're absolutely correct. They dominated the landscape in 2019 from a sales perspective, global sales perspective, which is great. Model 3 came on top of selling just over 300,000 units, which is fantastic. Uh, that's just for the Model 3. So, But that's great. Now, the second best um, sales product was from uh, BAIC in China, their EU series, um, they sold um, just over 110,000 units, which is great, over 111,000. Now, number three is going to surprise you because a lot of people discount the lowly Nissan Leaf, but I continue to stick up for it. I think it's a great product and it does fit a marketplace. Well, they came in third in overall global sales at just under 70,000 units. And here's a chart that, you know, of course, rounds out all the other players in that field, a lot more Chinese manufacturers and so forth. So for the manufacturers for 2019, it's no surprise that Tesla is and was the top uh, all a uh, plug-in manufacturer. So Tesla was up uh, uh, building or shipping uh, just 368,000, followed by BYD, uh, BAIC, and SAIC, which are uh, three Chinese manufacturers, and then BMW came in for VW still around, just uh, you know over 84,000 units, and then we have Nissan still holding in there with 80,000. A good year again. It's not we're not seeing this. We are seeing the hockey stick relative to the EV market, but, but relative to the car market, it's a very, very slow climb. So good to see 2019. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think about uh, uh, the, the numbers for 2019 and where you think the outlook for 2020 is. And uh, we'll conti I'll continue to monitor what's going on. Now, announcement came here for us knuckleheads here in Canada. Uh, if you don't know, we have a $5,000 national uh, federal program for EVs incentive. So you buy an EV that fits a certain price bracket. Under a price point, you get 5000 bucks off the price at the point of sale across Canada. So it's our only national program that we have. It's been doing actually quite well that they are the government's concerned that they may run out of money on our program. Um, they allocated $300 million over the next three years towards this, and we've already uh, spent $134 million out of this fund in only eight months. 
And why, you ask? Well, that's because EV adoption, this program is working, what it's supposed to do. And EV adoption across Canada is up. We went from 2 to 3% in 2019. This program, by the way, came out in the May of uh, 29, May 1st, 2019. So it was around for most of the year, calendar year-wise. Um, and, that, and that actually uh, constituted about 33,000 Canadians taking advantage of this program up until mid-July or mid-January of, of this year. The government's going back to relook at it to look at an expansion or kicking in more money to keep it going. This is working. It's working right across Canada, pretty well all the provinces and territories. And I hope that the government does put in more money to keep it going longer. Very short news hit from Hyundai is saying in the UK that sales of the Kona Electric are so strong, of course, they have not been able to keep up with demand. Well, we know that because in some other markets besides the UK, it's hard to find a Kona. But in UK specifically, it's going gangbusters. So what has Hyundai decided to do? Well, they've decided to now start producing these in the Czech Republic, as well as in addition to their South Korean main plant. So that'll allow Hyundai to increase the supply in cars and slash lead times. And they're hoping that because the demand is outstripping supply, they'll be able to significantly ramp up availability and cut delivery times. Now, they failed to say in this article when this is going to happen and how much the, how, how uh, of, of an impact they're going to do on delivery times. So you can read into that whatever you want. But at least it's great that, that Hyundai is recognizing the need for uh, uh, expansion in production and manufacturing of their electrified products, in this case the Kona specifically for the, the UK marketplace, which is great. Uh, I'm sure that this is going to translate into other markets marketplaces that uh, they're selling into, uh, and I believe that this is a trend we'll start seeing probably Kia look to do in the near future as well. I haven't heard anything and I have no no uh, information to that, but I'm just guessing that I don't see why because of the demand that these manufacturers will start expanding. And it looks like they didn't mention anything in this article about battery constraints. So it sounds like maybe some of that stuff is starting to work its way through the supply chain as things gear up. So good on Hyundai. I've talked over and over again, if you've listened to me for many years, uh, about the need for pricing and we need to get EV pricing down. In, for mass market adoption, right? Thirty, thirty-five thousand dollars, forty thousand is a lot of money, folks, for the majority of people, especially the mass market. So we need to get it down to the twenty, twenty-five thousand range. Less would be best, but uh, you know we'll we'll take that. Well, VW, of course, is continuing uh, at least another year of the up e up product in Europe and in specifically staying in Britain. In this case, um, that product is very very popular there. So they've been, they've come out with a pricing announcement on their new revised model of the e up. They're continuing with that. It's starting at nineteen thousand six hundred ninety five pounds. And that makes it the cheapest mass-produced EV currently on sale in Britain. Uh, if you take the Renault Twizy out of the equation, uh, that's cheaper. But again, that's not really kind of a mainstream EV that you would drive all the time. It's a little bit more of a different kind of class. It's a fun vehicle, though. So that's great. And what that gives you, actually, for that money is uh, VW has increased the range. So it used to have 83 miles, and now it's up to 153 miles. A very respectable range, 153 miles, 240 some odd, let's say 250 kilometers for you uh, metric heads. Um, and that's because of the, the larger 32.3 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack up from 18.7. So they've almost doubled the battery pack. Um, and uh, that's great to see. They're going to now it is going to be limited stock in the UK. Um, I, I anticipate these things probably to sell out. So they're building they're doing runs to to supply the marketplace at that price. And uh, I think it's a great buy. It's a great little car. Um, got enough room to get you around and about with this kind of range uh, increase. That'll that'll expand uh, expand the use case, uh, not just as an urban type zipping around car, but get you into more longer distance traveling. So good on VW. And if anybody's uh, one, any of my viewers have picked up the, this new improved version, I'd love to hear your feedback. Now, staying with small cars, the story that I followed for a little bit, uh, I talked about Artega and, of course, uh, another company that sells a very similar product called Microlino, uh, the couple of very cute cars I talked about last year. And I've been following this story because Artega's car looks very similar to the Microlino car. So Microlino, which is a company called Micromobility, took them to court and they they came to a settlement at the end of November into early December, reached an out-of-court agreement so that Artego can sell their car. So 
They have now opened the order books for their vehicle. It's a two-seater, fully electric mini car. It's called the Caro Isetta. Caro Isetta, if I'm saying that right. They expect to start shipping these and deliveries in the second quarter of this year. It's a pretty cool car. A little, a really little urban get-around car. Um, it's you know it's going to be decent spec-wise. It'll go up to about 90 kilometers per hour. So for winding around those Italian roads, you can't sometimes go that fast anyway. So and have a range up to 200 kilometers. So pretty decent, especially for an urban little uh, runabout, which is great. Now costs on these, uh, it's a little higher than I would probably like to see. But you know when when I just talked about the EUP uh, a moment ago. But the uh, they have a couple of trim levels. The intro uh, limited intro costs eighteen thousand five hundred euros plus VAT, uh, or twenty one nine nine five gross uh, euros in Germany, and the the addition will be available from fifteen thousand one twenty two euros plus VAT or seventeen nine nine five. So again, some pretty attractive under that twenty k price point. Hey, you know, I'm just glad to see more EVs on the road. This can take a this can certainly replace a lot of uh, small gas cars, even small little diesel cars that are out in the market. Uh, could even make a cool little small delivery vehicle if you're out and about doing deliveries of you know packages or whatever, envelopes, this kind of thing. So it'd be a great little vehicle. So glad to see if any of my viewers have one of these on order and get one. I'd love, love to hear from you. Now, my last story comes from India, and as you folks know, the last few shows, I've been trying to watch that marketplace a little bit more closely because there's a lot of stuff going on in those parts of the world as well, not just North America and Europe. And there's a company called SNEV G21. That's what I was able to partake the company. I believe it's just a small private organization, and they uh, actually had a viewer or commenter send me a note about the G21 that I should look into it. Well, I have actually emailed the president or the owner of that company to get more information, and uh, he was nice to send me some information. Now, there's a small company in India that I mentioned that's that's coming up to produce and start delivering a, a niche EV. Um, it's definitely not a supercar like uh, what I talked about on the Vega from uh, from before. But, you know, it's going to be okay. Here are some pictures um, that you're seeing of the car. Pretty neat. Um, it, it's called the model G20. There's three models of this uh, G21. There's a G21, the G22, and the G23. The difference is, is in battery pack size and pricing, of course. Now, um, I can tell you that the G21 has a 150 uh, kilowatt hour, a kilowatt, a Bosch motor. Everything has a Bosch motor in these and a 50 kilowatt uh, battery pack, 50 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, the G22 has a 200 kilowatt motor, so it's going to be faster, more power, and a 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the um, G23 uh, will have a up to 300 kilowatt um, Bosch motor, so again, more more horse more horsepower, more torque, and a similar 65 kilowatt hour battery pack. Um, what these are going to now i asked the president of the company some details about this and he said that about timing um, these are going to launch in october of this year so if you're interested in uh, checking them out go to their website they're going to do a limited pr production runs of about 1500 to 2500 units a year only um, they are built in country in india in uh, ahmedabad ahmedabad gotta say that in india so good for that um, standard range is 190 miles. Um, he's not saying if this is NEDC or EPA, so I'll guess it's the NEDC for now. Um, 190 miles, and there'll be a range extender option as well to add on another 100 miles. So I'm taking that to mean it may have a small engine when I hear range extenders. That's what I hear. Uh, but that'll be an option. And then, um, you know, I asked, like, what's kind of what's, what's kind of neat for this car? And if you do look at the pictures, it is, uh, according to the owner, the only car on the planet which opens like a tornado jet aircraft. And that is pretty cool the way it looks. So good on them. I love to see innovation and all this kind of stuff. Now, pricing on the G21 with the 150 uh, motor and the 50 kilowatt battery pack is... Uh, for what I was able to work out, about 2.3 million rupees, or about 30, 33,000 bucks USD, give or take a few cents. Uh, the middle model um, at 2.7 million rupees, or about 38,000 USD, based on current exchange. And then the top of the line model would be 3.8 million rupees, or 53,000 USD for that. So, uh, again, I'm glad to see, uh, again, more innovation, more... Um, 
uh, just more engineering, just more thought and more uh, efforts going into the EV landscape because, you know, even small niche cars can make a difference in their home countries, especially in their home market. So I'm glad to see these guys up and going. But congratulations for uh, these guys. And the company was again, what did I say it was? Uh, I forget. Um, there we go. SNEV G21. Congratulations, guys. Right, that's it for this edition edition of the EV Revolution show. I got so much I can't talk today. Boy, I really talked a lot at Fully Charged. Again, I want to thank everybody that came out uh, to see me at Fully Charged. This is episode 79, by the way. Thank you, everybody, uh, for watching. Boy, I got a lot of great comments at Fully Charged, and I continue to get tons of comments, which is great. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch my shows. And please do comment and uh, you know like, dislike, whatever you want on that. And I'd love it if you if you subscribe. It is free to subscribe. I don't annoy you with spam emails. You get notified when I do push a video out. That's it. You don't have to click the bell icon if you don't want to, but you can. You'll get notified in other fashions through YouTube as well. But it is important to subscribe. And I would very much appreciate it if you do. Again, I always want to humbly thank my Patreon supporters. You guys message me and I get commun regular communications from you folks. And thank you very much. It's very important. If you're interested, you know, even a buck a month would help. Um, check out my Patreon website and you can pledge. You know, follow me on Twitter. That's important. I, I stay pretty well uh, front and center in Twitter. So that's kind of the main social media platform that I use. My next episode, I will, I will come out with an episode shortly that kind of highlights some of the Fully Charged USA stuff. I've got a great interview with uh, the folks at Rivian. Those are kind of my number one to do when I went down there. We've got our Canadian International Auto Show coming up next week, which I'll be going to for Media Day. Got my press pass and everything, and there's a lot of uh, launches and announcements and excitement coming out on the EV landscape there. So I will be doing some filming and a couple interviews and reporting on that show in a couple of weeks as well because it's that car season now for auto show season so it's good to see so i believe that that's all i have for this show so i hope you enjoy that and again thank you everybody for watching thanks for your efforts if you do have an electric vehicle and you're out there talking to people and spreading the word and the message because it is making a difference we are seeing growth globally in the world so until the next show please everybody stay safe and i will see you when i see you take care Bye bye